1970s, a group of prominent Aboriginal people living in the Geelong region came together to support Aboriginal adolescents and children who were removed by the Aboriginal protectors from around Australia under the White Australia policy. Throughout the 1950s and 60s within this Geelong region, there were roughly six organisations, missions and reserves formed by the Catholic Christian Church Australian Government dedicated to the systematic removal of Aboriginal children from their families and communities. This removal stripped Aboriginal youth of their identity, place and belonging, their human rights, their connectedness to country, their right to speak their own language, their knowledge of clan, kinship, moiety, totem systems and cultural connection to family, their right to engage in ceremony, story, song and dance. The right as a sovereign people to live within and amongst their own community, governance and specific clan and language group on their own country, Australia, and their right to self-determination by living under their own jurisdiction and law was taken away, and with it the connection to ancestral knowledge. The handing down of knowledge from our old people and our creator to the next generation was broken. The Australian Government, with their White Australia policy and their policy of assimilation, intended to exterminate the Aboriginal bloodlines by assimilating Aboriginal children into Anglo-Saxon families, to therefore breed out any resemblance of their Aboriginal history and living ancestry. By doing so, the self-instated Government will be able to gain full control of the stolen country and the sovereign people from whom the lands were stolen. On many levels, this regime has played out exactly as intended. Within the Geelong region at the time of these policies was the Geelong branch of the Aborigines Advancement League, which was supported by the Aboriginal Advancement League in Melbourne and Pastor Sir Doug Nichols. After many years, the Geelong branch of the Aboriginal Advancement League was closed for political reasons. And a short time later, on the 19th of July, 1970, the first meeting of the Aboriginal Affairs Association took place at 25 Fenwick Street, Geelong, the former Community Aid Abroad Building. The Aboriginal Affairs Associations had two strategies. One, educating members and interesting the public in matters concerning Aboriginal welfare. And two, giving support to groups connected with Aboriginal Affairs. Prominent members of the Jewish and non-Indigenous community, Colin Silcox, Mitchell Hill, and prominent Aboriginal community member Ivan Cousins, to name a few, made up a band of many prominent community members associated with the organisation. Throughout the 1970s, many meetings would take place with Indigenous and non-Indigenous families. The McLaughlins, the Evans, the Shays, the McGregors, Harrison, the McFadgens and the Atkinson who would come together to discuss potential outcomes and opportunities in providing adopted Aboriginal children affected by the policies with community holiday programs. The holiday programs saw those adopted children go to camps set up by the department in Queenscliff or meet at participating families' residencies at the beginning of the school holidays, where the non-Indigenous families of those residencies would select an Aboriginal child and provide the opportunity to join the family on their family holiday in Bowen Head or other family holiday destinations. At the end of the holidays, they would then be returned to their mission or reserve or their adopted family. As these strategies were being implemented throughout the late 1970s, many Aboriginal people were meeting in their homes to continue discussions of how to support these Aboriginal children who were being removed. The children were now known as members of the Stolen Generation. Towards the late 70s, Leo Muir, deceased, joined Ivan Cousins, deceased, traditional owner Trevor Edwards, deceased, Adrian Jackson, deceased, Quinton Jackson, Merrin Atma Atkinson, knee, Shea Edwards, Vicky Cousins, Sue McFadgen, knee, Harrison, Vince Ross, Joylene Rahl, knee, Walsh, Kay Edwards, Greg Edwards, Jim Berg, Reg Blow, and others to discuss and continue developing the idea of an organisation of their own. In 1978, a new organisation was formed by the Aboriginal community members that attended those meetings. And two years later, on the 14th of March, 1980, an application was submitted to the Register of Cooperative Societies in Melbourne. The named Geelong and District Aboriginal Cooperative Limited was then registered to its new offices at the time at 117 
Myers Street, Geelong, and signed off by the Chairman of Directors, Mr T Edwards, and Secretary, Mrs S McFadgen. The applicants for membership were traditional owner, Trevor Edwards, deceased, Merrin Apfa Atkinson, me, Shay Edwards, Ivan Cousin, deceased, Leo Muir, deceased, Susan McFadgen, Gwenda Black, Adrian Jackson, deceased, Laura Edwards, and Raymond Edwards. All named candidates would submit their membership forms on the 14th day of March 1980 and form the foundation members of the Geelong and District Aboriginal Cooperative. I certify that the Geelong and District Aboriginal Cooperative Limited and its rules on the 22nd day of March 1980 was registered under the Cooperative Act 1958. The act by virtue of which registration the society became incorporated thereunder. The Certificate of Registration for Geelong and District Aboriginal Cooperative Limited and its rules was then certified on the 27th day of March 1980. This was the beginning of the Geelong and District Aboriginal Cooperative. The historical name of the cooperative oversaw the organisation for five years. On the 21st of November 1985, the Aboriginal community at their annual AGM requested a name change. The meeting chaired by Vicky Cousins put the request to the members and the motion was moved by the secretary, Joy Smith, and seconded by Leo Muir. The motion was unanimous and, on the 20th of December, 1985, the organisation was newly registered as the Wotherong Aboriginal Cooperative Limited. The name Wotherong, Wada Warang, is a recognised tribe community an organisation that continues the development and delivery of programs and services to the Aboriginal community within lands and named boundaries of the Wathaurong region. We wish you and all your family good health and safety during these uncertain times in the face of the worldwide pandemic. A message to community, stay strong. We are survivors and we remember our strength in survival today and every day. Thank you. Goodbye.